Hey everyone, this is Rish and welcome back to my channel. So the new patch notes have just landed and we're going to take a look into these today. Let's do it. Triumph to survive the devouring mists. Gather near adventurer. Since our last content update, you've earned converted garments from the overflowing Arsenal limited time event, gained untold riches from the Sunfall Reliquary Grotto and fought through many returning events. This content update brings the Season 30 Battle Pass, Devouring Mists, new legendary items, the Temptations End Phantom Market, and twice the riches with the Winds of Fortune Limited Time Event. So kicking off with the Winds of Fortune Limited Time Event, Haradric scholars have been poring over their tomes to find the source of this extravagant wealth, while the Merchants of Sanctuary have immediately sought to increase their already expansive wealth. From August 29th to September 5th, you will see double as you receive twice the amount of rewards. Any of these items will drop in duplicate quantities include Heradric Bestiary, Challenge Rifts, Bounties, Fishing, Dungeons, Purge the Depths, Accursed Towers, Hidden Lairs, Farming in Wild Zone and Codex Activities. During this limited time event, Battle Pass rewards will not be doubled and the weekly limit on Battle Pass points and normal gems will not change. Any bonus experience gained will be affected by your current modifier. So if you're above the current Paragon level, your experience will still be rewarded at the correct percentage for that. Next up, we have Forsaken Justice limited time event. When the downtrodden of the realm fall prey to the many nefarious schemes of the burning hells, vengeance falls with a heavy hand. Rise to defend them and cleave the rotted flesh of the Hellspawn apart. From September 5th to September 15th, Adventurers Level 30 and over will preview of the next major update to arrive in the Forsaken Justice Limited Time event. During the event, you will also receive 100% boost to experience gain from Battle Pass levels. Rewards are available in-game on the following days, so there are specific dates for this which are September 7th, September 9th and September 13th. Log in and complete the daily tasks to receive your rewards. Now let's take a look at the Season 30 Battle Pass Cosmetic. Underwhelming to say the least. This is definitely not a nice cosmetic. At least it's not red again, but I just think this is boring as shit. Like, yeah. This... I will be buying the battle pass for the other perks, but definitely not for the cosmetic. However, this phantom market cosmetic, now I do not normally spend on phantom market, but this looks awesome, especially for wizard. So this is probably gonna be one of the first times that I actually spend on phantom market. Um, I'm pretty much done with my legendary gem upgrades for now. So I might have to make a purchase and hope that I get lucky with my rolls. Um, but this cosmetic looks awesome from the artist depiction of it. So let's just hope it looks just as amazing once it's in game. Now let's take a look at the new legendary items coming for wizard. Radiant Spline's main hand. When Lightning Nova deals a critical hit, it emits a charged bolt. Trifling Piffle offhand. When Lightning Nova hits a shocked enemy, it unleashes another Lightning Nova. Cannot occur more often than once every 6 seconds. Isolated Storm Chest Lightning Nova now calls a Lightning Orb to orbit you, dealing lightning damage to enemies it hits. Raptor's Tail Pants When Disintegrate hits a shocked enemy, it unleashes Chain Lightning, dealing damage to the target and two nearby enemies. Cannot occur more often than once every 1 second. Autumnal Crest Helm Slow time now surrounds you with, with a static field that follows you, damaging and applying shock to all nearby enemies. And filtered defense shoulders. Disintegrate now surrounds you with an entropy field that follows you, damaging and making nearby enemies vulnerable to critical hits. So this is very much an electric build for Wizard, which I'm actually super excited to try this out. It could be really interesting and it will definitely be fun to try out in Battleground, I'm sure. So more on that once it lands in game. There is also some class balance changes coming, so we're going to once again just look at Wizard here. So for War Mage Mantle Disintegrate, damage is increased by 20%, Projectile Speed increased by 33%. Projectile can now bounce between the caster and enemies, Projectiles have improved target tracking. Mistral Rend Arcane Wind, damage increased by 20%, Projectile Speed increased by 33%, Projectile can now bounce between caster and enemies, and Projectiles have improved target tracking. 
Terminus facade, slow time, cooldown reduction effect for other skills increased from 0.8 to 1.2 seconds. Now also increases movement speed by 20%, which stacks up to 60% when using non-channeled skills. So that'll be easier to understand once this has all been tested in game. Taking a quick look over returning events, starting off with Fractured Plane, we have Conqueror PvP making a return, Wild Brawl PvP making a return, Survivor's Bane coming back, we also have Alley of Blood PvP making a return again, and there's a few changes with that. We have Hungering Moon, so a really nice event for easy rewards, and I actually really like that one every time we have it. Shady Stock, again, easy legendary items from this one and all clans on deck. So all clans on deck is definitely one of my favorite events because you obviously get normal gems and legendary gems as well. Touching on a few other changes, starting off with battleground resonance notification. In battlegrounds, we've changed how we're matchmaking to player power rather than simply using resonance levels. Matchmaking for battlegrounds based off resonance levels didn't fully capture a player's true power, often leading to uneven matches where a player's entire host of skills and abilities were considered. We will now use a system for matchmaking that takes comprehensive combat power for matchmaking, which better represents a player's overall power. We found that using combat resonance and four dimensional attributes, level, battleground, match score, resonance level to matchmake couldn't fully capture a player's overall power. This led to instances where players of a similar calculated rating could have vastly different player power, which was frustrating experience. To solve this problem, we instead choose to use comprehensive combat power for matchmaking comprehensive combat power is calculated based on all your player abilities and power this includes life damage the previously mentioned four dimensional attributes damage reduction and damage increase of deodessa legendary gems and more this should more accurately judge your overall combat ability which combined with new matchmaking rules can bring better balanced matches in battleground so as i always say we'll believe it when we see it battlegrounds legendary rank notification Upon reaching legendary rank in Battlegrounds, some players gave feedback that they started to encounter players with far higher resonance levels compared to their own. Once you reach legendary rank, resonance level isn't as impactful when matchmaking. Upon reaching above 3,500 resonance level, resonance level is no longer considered when matchmaking. Now, this to me is pretty damn stupid because you can't sit there and tell me that someone with 3,500 resonance is going to be anywhere near as strong as someone with 10,000 resonance. So clearly, whoever this person is that is playing Diablo Immortal for the blizzard team they haven't actually tried this out yet themselves um i mean not having resonance level considered when matchmaking above 3500 is just absolutely fucking absurd i'm sorry that just yeah that makes sense now why i get these crazy matches but it also makes no sense from my point of view in that they can even consider someone with 3,500 resonance should match make with someone that's 10,000 resonance. Excuse me if I'm wrong with how I've read that, but that seems to be how it reads to me. But let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. And some bad news for free to play who are using alts to farm platinum. Legendary gem market price changes. We are lowering the minimum market prices for some of the gems. The following gems will now be posted to sell at the following amounts. Normal gems reduced to 50 platinum from 100. One star legendary gems unchanged. Two star legendary gems reduced to 1,600. Five star legendary gems reduced to 12,800. This now balances the minimum prices for all qualities of legendary gems at a flat cost of 400 platinum. Now, I do believe they have done this simply because of the people that use their alts to farm platinum. Um, but this is going to make it really difficult for a lot of players in the market, whether you are free to play or whether you do spend. So it'll be interesting to see if that crashes the market even more than they did with the last change to it. Whispers of a new Worldstone quest. The act of destroying the Worldstone shards has warped your soul and dark whispers echo in the shadows. As you walk through your adopted home of Westmarch, you may hear errant voices. Whether you choose to listen to them is up to you. And lastly in this update will be bug fixes, which probably means more special features in game. 
But that is it for me today. Let me know what you were most excited for from this update. For me, it's definitely got to be the new Phantom Market cosmetic. Everything else I'll be excited for once I've tried it out. The new essences look pretty cool for Wizard as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.